Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here again. Uh, Mishmash Monday. You know, I hear a lot of people can't wait for the weekend to end just so they can get to the next Mishmash Monday. That's, that's good to hear. A <laughs> uh, couple things to talk about today. We're going to try and get a lot in today, but I don't know about tool restoration, but we got a lot of good things to talk about. Pretty interesting. Uh, quick rant to start off the uh, Monday Mosh. And uh, the, today's rant is going to be about the uh, headlights. <laughs> you know... <laughs> Uh, when I was younger, uh, we used to hang around a gas station and, you know, work a little bit, do a little work at the gas station. And we always worked on our own cars and things like that. And I don't know if some of you old timers right, or might remember when you had to get your car inspected. Here in New York, we have to inspect our cars every year, bring it up for an inspection. And, um... We have, uh, the first thing you used to have to do was drive it into the uh, place and they would put it and aim your headlights. Do you remember that? Do you remember headlight aiming? Well, uh, th the old fashioned headlights were round headlights. They were all pretty much standard and they had uh, usually uh, three or four different adjustment screws and you can adjust the headlight in the up, down, left or right, you know, whichever you had to. And what happens is, as always, you know, cars, they get older, they start to sag in the back, the springs, whatever, and, you know, the headlights would start aiming higher, so they would drop it down at the inspection. It was no big deal. What happened? What happened to that? I mean, now, I'll tell you something. You know, I know when you get older, you know, the bright lights tend to bother you on the road and stuff, and I'm, I'm guilty. You know, I, I'm bothered by bright lights, and and, uh, you know, first of all, it was one of three things. It was either some idiot was driving with his high beams on on the highway when he shouldn't be when you had oncoming traffic. That's number one. Number two was your headlights were out of alignment. But now you have a third one with these uh, new headlights today with these... You ever see these blue headlights? These blinding headlights? I mean, come on now. Come on. <laughs> Uh, it's just out of control. You know, it's something here in New York. It's different. I guess some some of you guys live in, in areas where, you know, you don't see too many cars or the roads are designed properly where they're wide enough and you have a little bit of a barrier in between. So you're not, you know, you don't really are heading straight on to somebody. But here in New York, especially upstate, you got roads like the Taconic. Man, the Taconic Parkway. If you ever come to New York on a rainy night, you drive on a Taconic and... uh you know what the pucker factor is on that road? It's way up there. Anyway, so uh, headlight aiming. You ever have a problem with that in your, where you live? Or is this just something here in New York State that's, uh, that's really a problem? Let me okay, know. Okay, so that was uh, today's rant. <laughs> I could go on, but I tried to keep it as short as possible. Now, uh, let's get to what we're going to talk about. First thing I want to talk about is a little while ago when we were doing the lanterns, I happened to talk about the, I show one of the lighters and a couple people were saying about Zippo lighters. And um, let me talk about Zippo lighters for a minute. If you haven't heard of or you don't own one, let's talk okay, about Okay, now, it. Uh, you know, ever since I'm a kid, you know, lighters are a big part of your life. Now, I'm not a smoker. Uh, I am a joker. Definitely not a midnight toker. But what happens is... Um, when you need a lighter or something like that, you know, start off with matches as your kid, you know, you're building fire and scouts, things like that. And uh, later on, we came to a, you know, more and more reliable lighters and things like that and came out with the big style lighters or butane. These are very good. Um, I like this particular type here. If you press it down, you, there's no safety. You have to push over anything. You just press it down. It has an electric kind of uh, lighter that sparks it and it doesn't work off of a flint wheel and these things like I said are very reliable they're good um, but for lighting my lanterns and things like that you want something with a little bit longer uh, nozzle on it and these come in really handy these are typically known as barbecue lighters things like that extremely cheaply made I mean uh, you know these things are they're, I, I, they're so cheap you have some that are refillable with a little nozzle back here and some that aren't. But the main thing is that uh, there are different, many, many different types. A lot of them have these safeties that are built in now that you got to push forward, which are always a pain. But when you're using these, one good thing to remember is, because uh, a lot of people have problem with these, what you have to do is you have to squeeze the trigger halfway down to let the gas fill the tube before you strike it. So in other words, when you want to light this up, you press this forward, you know, the safety, you pull the trigger halfway back and wait a second for the gas to fill up, then squeeze the trigger and it will light that way. If you're click, 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 and it's not lighting, it's because you're not letting the gas fill it up. Uh, this one here, this Scripto wind resistant, you know what's nice about this? Look at the flame on this one here. 
it's it's got like a jet flame you see that can, uh, can you see that flame and and that's really nice especially for for lighting lanterns things like that so but none of these lighters have any style to them you know what I mean? There's, there's nothing enjoyable about using any one of these. Now, that's where this lighter comes in. This lighter is called a Zippo lighter. And you can see here it's written on the bottom. And uh, it was invented by Mr. George Blaisdell in uh, mid-30s. Uh, he got the patent, but in the early 30s he invented it. And uh, basically what he did is he saw an Austrian lighter and some guy was struggling with it. And according to the history on the website, uh, he reinvented the lighter more or less, keeping this type of, uh, of a chimney, but reinventing this that had a cover. And, and he did a really good job because this is a, a fantastic lighter. It does have some drawbacks and we'll talk about that in a minute. But if you don't own a Zippo lighter, it's something that you really should think about buying because first of all, they're made in Pennsylvania, okay? They're made in the same place that they, you know, and it's done in such a way that they come with a lifetime warranty as they always have. And they're just a fantastic lighter. Um, because first of all, they have that sound. Listen to that sound when it opens and closes. Nothing else sounds like that. I mean, it's just a joy to use. And when you want to strike it, you know, it, 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 it has a great flame to it. It's, uh, this, if you don't own one, it's a $12 investment. And I'm telling you, you'll enjoy it, you know? And like I said, you know, you don't have to be a smoker or anything, but it's always good to have some kind of fire starter with style. And just owning one of these, is, is a this is a classic uh, chrome type. They have so many different other Now, ones. again, I'm not a collector of Zippos, but these things are, you know, addicting. Once you have one, you do come across, sometimes you get them for gifts. Here's a nice railroad model. Uh, you know, it's got the brass and, you know, you could put your initials on here or it's done from the from the factory. You can get it. Uh, there are some of these that are put out, guess from what country, that are in fakes. So you got to be careful. Again, they're cheap enough to buy originals uh, that you wouldn't want to buy a fake, but somehow they slip in there. So you always got to be careful and, and make sure you buy from a reputable dealer. But again, uh, these are the brass type. All Zippos are brass, but uh, then they do do a chrome plating or uh, uh, some kind of plating. But they're all made to start off from brass. Uh, they have different size ones here. If uh, A case is a really good thing to have because it does protect it. And it's such a nicely made case, you know. The original Zippo cases, when you, you uh, place your lighter in, it does uh, hold it nicely. And, uh, and it doesn't, you know, you don't have to worry about losing it. It has a belt hook. Uh, the Zippo lighters do come like this from the factory. This is what they look like. They come, this is a, a chrome. Uh, and uh, it's just a, you know, a really beautiful lighter. And I suggest everybody get one. And uh, I'll show you a couple things. Here's a commemorative from uh, 82. Again, uh, they have ones that are re uh, replicas of the early ones that they made. But let me show you some interesting things about why uh, and how you would use a zip. Now the simplicity of this lighter is what makes it such a, a, a collectible to so many people. Uh, first of all, there's a thumb wheel here with a flint underneath it. Now there's two pieces to a Zippo basically, and that's the case here is the, the case. And you can see how that is. It's got a welded hinge on there. And then it's called the insert. And here's the insert that goes in here. And this is uh, the guts of the lighter, so to speak. There's a little felt pad here. And you pull this back and you fill this up with lighter fluid. Just, you know, you put lighter fluid in there. And if ever your flint starts to go, you unscrew this. There's a spring and that's where the flint goes. Very simple. But uh, then you, what you do is you place this back in here, just like this. And it's it's ready to go, you know, and it this will burn and in windproof. Let me show you a short uh, a short little video I shot the other night. The winds were like 20 miles an hour. And let me show you this video. So you can see I'm a real big fan of these and uh, I actually gave them to the scouts one year uh, because I am such a fan. But let me tell you one thing that uh, there's a drawback to these and that is that uh, you do have to fill these up, you know, with a lighter fluid and I use the Ronsonol, but they also have uh, 
you know, they also make a Zippo lighter fluid, um, but you do have to fill these up. And what happens is just because of the design of the lighter, it does evaporate. So, you know, every few days it will dry out and you'll have to refill it. I mean, some guys get a couple weeks out of it or whatever, but uh, you do have to refill it. It doesn't use it up from the flame. It just kind of evaporates out of there. Some guys wrap tape around it, but that's not what this is made for. It's not a survival lighter. You wouldn't bring this into survival. <laughs> you know, some guys have different canisters of fuel. You, you know, there are better options, but there is no better option for a fit and feel and something that's that's made in the same place and made under the same specifications as it was for the past uh uh, 70 years, 80 years, you know, so pick up one of these. But I want to show you something I just picked up that I wanted to keep Next in the Next up, car. I just happened to have this. I thought I would show it to you. Uh, if you're a cigarette smoker or something and you wanted to keep something in the car that you wouldn't have to worry about fuel or anything. You ever see one of these? This is a, uh, actually it's a reproduction of like a, a early, they call it a sailor's lighter. It goes back to the uh, early late 1800s it's it's amazing and what it is it's a piece of cotton rope braided cotton rope and a tube here and then there's another tube that holds a flint with a striker wheel that's all it is now you'll see a little ball at the top here that's to extinguish the uh the rope when you're finished using it but what's interesting about this is a charred piece of rope so when you first get this it comes with a regular rope you got to light it with another lighter and blow it out and it'll leave a little bit of charred up there and the charring has carbon in it so all you have to do is you strike this wheel and you'll see it sparks onto the uh, uh you line it up here and this will spark onto the carbon that's already onto the rope like that and then what you do you can see it's it's ignited you blow on it and look at that that's a hot flame you know a hot ember there that you can use to uh, light tinder or whatever you had to no fuel whatsoever anything a piece of rope and you see how long it lasts and and again it's, it's a bright hot light now to extinguish it just turn it upside down like this and pull it up so that the ball goes into the the hole here and that extinguishes it within about three seconds all of the uh the ember will be out and then if you want to look and check you'll see it's it's out but uh, that's pretty interesting, huh? Especially so it's so simple. These run about three dollars on or four dollars on uh, Amazon. You can buy three for ten or whatever. And I just thought that was pretty interesting. That you know a lot of people have never seen these before. How simple it works and it always works. Okay, next up, you remember uh, Bob had asked me. Said uh, he didn't know how much smaller this uh, mini cray tool was from the. This is the regular cray tools that Bridgeport made, and this was the mini one we did uh, a couple weeks ago. So that's how smaller, uh, how much smaller it is. And it's hard to tell when you don't have another one next to it because you know they kept the proportions pretty much the same, but. You see, that's the uh, the difference in size. Okay, last up, uh, I have something to talk about. Anti-theft. I used to, Scouts used to love this. I thought maybe I'd show it to you. If you haven't seen it before, let's check now, it out. Now, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these before. This is a UV marker, and uh, meaning that it can only be seen on the UV light. This one here is made by uh, Sanford. It's a number 12100, and it's a uh, security marker, you could see here. And this is what it looks like. It looks like a regular marker. And uh, you can't really see the, uh, because it's a UV ink. So what's pretty interesting is I marked here, if you look at this white piece of paper here down here, and uh, this is a uh, UV flashlight you can get anywhere, you know, very cheap on Amazon, whatever. And I'll watch here and you could see, you see, oh, it's, here's the funny thing. Nah, there you could see it. It's hard to show up on the, uh, because these they have UV filters and things here, but you see here? And, uh, and what's interesting about that is if you have something that you want to mark, isn't that cool? If you have something you want to mark, like this flashlight here, if you want to mark it for anti-theft, do you put your number on it or something? Here I marked, let's see if we can get it to show up. You can see here, I marked uh, 0311 USMC. Can you see that there? I'll zoom in on that. But you can see, and it's invisible otherwise, but... I just thought that was pretty interesting because if ever you have something or you know that you want to mark that might be stolen or whatever the case may be or you want to mark that's yours you just take this marker and uh it'll work on all kinds of surfaces like here here's just a can here and you can see uh we have nothing on there but when you take this like this and you mark it you could see that that will come up and, and show you can see that mark on there and that's uh this is usually the hardest type of can to uh 
to to use but it shows up much better much better in the dark and and it's invisible to uh to naked eye so i thought that was pretty okay neat. hard to believe that was 15 minutes already huh anyway uh thanks so much for tuning in i hope you have a nice day and uh we'll talk to you again on wednesday take care now bye bye